Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about mobile asset management and enabling ServiceNow asset management practitioners to wrap mobile lifecycle management and governance within the same platform where they're managing their other IT hardware. So their workstations, desktops, laptops, their network devices, their infrastructure, uh, servers and storage arrays uh, and everything in between. Mobile asset management should really be no different. Now there's many ways for you to ingest your mobile devices into the platform. Typically most organizations will have their company owned mobile devices registered and enrolled into a mobile device management solution. So an MDM solution like Intune, like Jamf for any iOS devices, uh, potentially AirWatch as well, which uh, is now under the VMware umbrella. But regardless of what those sources are, it's still a source of truth that we need ingested into the platform, much like we do for other discovered CIs. And this is where they're going to go. They're going to go in your, in your roll up CI, CMDB CI table view. Um, and it's going to be auto enrolled into the appropriate CMDB class. So we've got computer class, racks, servers, network devices, and ultimately handheld mobile devices as well. So that tends to be where the mobile devices get created within the CMDB table schema. Uh, and if you're connecting in through a ServiceNow connector, so a connector that's sort of built and supported by ServiceNow for any one of the uh, sources that I had mentioned earlier, then those connectors and part of their job is to ensure that all of the appropriate data the operational data on that mobile device is being uh, obviously discovered and then placed into the appropriate tables and, and the appropriate fields within those, those, uh, those records and those tables. So that happens in a consistent and repeatable fashion and you're, you're looking at a, at a clean CMDB health and quality for your mobile devices. Now to, to take a look and see where those devices are uh, are going within the CMDB, you can go into the, the CI class manager view and, and this is where you'd get to see exactly where the uh, CIs are going in and in terms of which, which tables they're going in. So if I was to look at, let's say handheld computing devices, I can see that that's just an extension of the hardware table uh, and then ultimately in the handheld computing device table. So it'll give me some basic information about the table. So, you know, what the table name is, a description for what types of devices ultimately will make it into that table. And if I wanted to see a list of the CIs that are now being populated in that table, in this case, I just have a couple demo records for iPad Pro that are cell cellular devices, right? So this is not just the traditional iPad, but this is the cellular enabled device. Uh, obviously, if I have uh, iPhones and, and Android devices uh, from various manufacturers, those would be coming in to the handheld computing device table. So this is where the data comes in. Now, once the, the CIs have been created, so if I, let's say, open up a specific CI record, it's going to pull in attributes associated to that CI. If there was an IMEI number in my source, right? So if my Intune or AirWatch source was able to capture that data from the device through that registration process, when you enroll a device into MDM, we'll be, we'll be able to pull in the IMEI number. If there's, a, if there's a serial number associated to it, we'll pull the serial number. Any other operational data associated to that device that's of relevance, you can pull that in provided we're able to get that data from the source. Now, you can have asset records automatically created for every CI that's been discovered. You can choose to have that happen automatically. In some classes, you may not want that to happen. So if you've got let's say a virtual server or virtual machine that's being discovered by a CMDB connected source, you may not want to treat that as an asset. More often than not, virtual, virtual servers aren't treated the same way as a traditional asset would. Yes, you'd still wanna manage the operational data, but you don't need any business data associated to the server. So if you look at the two sides of a coin, you may not need to look at the other side for certain types of assets. You may not have or want to have an asset management governance wrapped on certain categories. But in this case, you absolutely do. You do need to capture business information on a mobile device. You may ultimately want that uh, integrated or tied in to other processes within your ServiceNow environment from HR and onboarding all the way to contract management and ultimately offboarding. So there's an entire life cycle 
that um, you'd, you'd want this physical asset to go through a virtual server, for example. So once you have these devices automatically created with the asset record, now if I go into the asset record, I can see the business information. So the other side where operational data is the CI side of the equation, business data is the asset side of the equation. This is where I'd be able to capture the state of the asset, the location of the asset, who it's assigned to, what function I want to attribute to it, all that other business information would be associated, that would be associated to the asset I'd be able to see on this side of the coin. Now, everything you've looked at so far is within the classic ServiceNow uh, experience. And the reason I, I wanted to start here was to show you how we connect to the data, how we you know, configure the data, um, and, and ultimately you can still see the data within this classic view. But I'm gonna pivot immediately now to the hardware asset management product, uh, specifically the workspace that was designed for hardware asset management practitioners. And as you can see, you know this experience is ultimately where a practitioner will live and breathe once they've created their integrations through the help of a ServiceNow administrator or a partner. This is where they're going to work to manage the, their assets throughout their life cycle. And you can see as part of the capabilities of the solution, we're able to auto categorize all the different types of CIs and the associated assets that get created. So you can see at a quick glance, all of the computers that you have, all the mobile devices that you have. So you can, you can get a quick view for all of these assets and clicking into any of these will take you directly into that category. There's obviously other business information as well from the eligibility of an asset for a refresh based on defined life cycle duration to, and again, if you've got financial information integrated, you can bring in the, the value associated and the spend associated to the different types of assets that are being discovered in your environment. But the purpose of this session is to look specifically at mobile devices. So I'm gonna zoom in to the 82 mobile device assets that I have within my demo environment. And here's where you can see all of the information associated to the devices that have been discovered. The reason there's no assignments in this case specifically is because these are in stock. They're not currently assets that are in use. The ones that are in use have assignments already. So for example, if I wanted to look into the Samsung Galaxy S21 mobile device, I can click directly into the asset tag and now I'm looking at the asset and again, this is just a different view to what we saw earlier on the business information associated to an asset. This view is where an asset manager can see all the changes that may have been made to this asset over time as it's gone through various owners over time, as it moves from in stock to in use, they can track that entire activity, any work orders, any returns, any incidents that may be raised against this mobile device will be accessible to them and it'll link directly into the other ServiceNow modules from incident management, change management, and so on. Specifically for this category, so this model category of asset, which is a mobile device, we've introduced some specific attributes that are very, very much catered to the mobile device itself. So if I scroll down into these attributes, you can see here there's a, an entire section within the asset record on mobile devices. And this section, again, is catered to the category of device that we've discovered, which is mobile in this case. Attributes that are relevant here would be the type of carrier, because this is a cellular device, the IMEI number, which we're getting from the operational data from our discovery source. If there's other information that we're able to pull in, MAC addresses and so on, we can get that as well. Now, some information here may not be discoverable. Some of this may be captured in other third-party systems. So you may have captured the, the cell phone number or the mobile number in another system of reference. It could be in a spreadsheet somewhere. So this is that opportunity to bring all that data together and have it associated to the device within your CMDB, including when the asset was enrolled. Now, this may have come in from your MDM solution, whereas this information perhaps came in from a different system, just as this information may have come in from a different system. The purchase date may come from a financial system. And just like that, the contract information may also be managed in a separate system. Typically contracts that are managed for, or service contracts that are managed for mobile devices are managed as separate entities. And the assets that those contracts govern are often looked at in isolation, which is not a, a best practice because ultimately, you don't want to renew a service contract for a mobile device that, let's say, has been sitting on the shelf for a really long period of time or may have gone through several incidents over time that might want you to reconsider renewing that model from, from your cell phone provider or may want you to renegotiate the service contract because it's actually costing you more money to keep this specific model 
which is a Samsung Galaxy S21, because you've seen several incidents against all types of assets that roll up to that model. So having a look at that data in isolation is never a good idea. It's, it's best to look at the holistic picture of, of your mobile devices, including the contracts associated to them. Now, if I wanted to see more information about this contract that I've associated to it, I can simply open up the contract record from here and I can get into all the details associated to a contract from start and end dates, contract approvers and owners or administrators. Uh, and then I can also see all of the other assets that may be governed by the same service contract. Now, we were looking at just that one asset, but I can see here that I've got you know 38 other assets. And I can see here that a lot of these are just sitting on the shelf. They're all in stock and available. They're not even in use today. So when it comes time to renewing this contract, I can make a better informed decision. I may want to make a decision midway through the contract as well. I'm just gonna go back for a moment into the overall contracts overview page, just to highlight a couple of other important things here. We have this concept of important actions around contracts and letting you know when things are coming up for renewal. There are also out of the box notifications that are pre-configured to deliver alerts. As you approach those thresholds, you can obviously configure the thresholds as well. And then at the bottom here, you can get a quick glimpse into all of the types of contracts that you've got within the platform. So from software license and maintenance contracts to hardware warranty contracts, subscription software, uh, and more. Uh, and you can also see in terms of the vendors that are occupying the most amount of spend from a contract perspective. And here we can see IBM uh, bears the brunt of, of that expense. And then here's a list of all the upcoming contract renewals that are pre-sorted by end date. And it is a very quick way for you to get directly into the record, much like the record we were looking at for uh, the service contract. I'm now looking at a lease or hardware lease contract for Dell hardware. So this was just a demonstration for how you can bring all of your mobile device data onto the platform to be able to manage the life cycle of those mobile devices over time, capture all of the attributes that may be housed today in different books of reference, spreadsheets, documents, or systems, and ingest them into a single platform where now you can start to perform all sorts of life cycle events from requesting those assets, having them auto assigned to individuals through that request process, to repairing the assets during incidents, associating them to contracts, renewing those contracts. If you lease them, tying them to lease activities, calculating the total cost of ownership, residual values of those assets, all the way to assets being retired when people leave the organizations. You can now see how that asset has performed over its entirety of its life and what it's ultimately costed you over the life rather than just the tip of the iceberg acquisition cost up front. Hopefully this was beneficial. If you have any questions at all, please do post on the ServiceNow community uh, where we have hundreds if not thousands of active participants who will help answer your questions and provide their own personal business insights based on how they've implemented hardware asset management for their mobile devices. Thank you.